Hi guys, today I'm gonna talk to you about connecting a OLED display on a particle breadboard. Uh, display is a small one, it doesn't have a lot of pixels and it's those pixels that are already there are blue. So variety of colors is set, limited to one. Um, OLED stands for organic OLED and this particular display has 64 times 48 pixels. As I mentioned before, it's blue. And uh, the code that we're gonna write for this display is going to be the one from the library. Because in embedded software development, you would probably use a library to do something, some common task. Uh, in order to um, display things here, manufacturer has created a library for, for display and that's the one that we are gonna use. And uh, con how to connect the OLED on the board? Well, the instructions are going to be in the example code that we will see from the library. In order to do this demo, we need a display and the task is just to run a demo from the library. Let's do it. I have a project here. It's the empty one. Just to zoom in a bit. And I will not cle clean the text because uh, we will use the code from the library. To work with the libraries in a particle, particle workbench, you would probably need to invoke a command called find library. So I press control shift P and choose particle find libraries. And now the dialog asks me which library and type here OLED. And in the results, you would probably see few of these and uh, just select the name of SparkFun Micro OLED. It is actually the OLED that I have here available. SparkFun Micro OLED, copy that and press again, Ctrl Shift P, install library. And now it will ask me which library to install. Paste what you have just copied before. Now, in the bottom part, you will see that the Spark and Micro OLED library is installed. And what has happened here now is if you check project properties, you will see that it has uh, one extra line that says dependencies that Spark on Micro OLED and the version number here. And this is what's necessary to install the library into a project. And also, we have a lib folder which is now pre-filled with the source code of the library that is downloaded, by the way, from uh, GitHub. And you can take a look at the examples folder and micro OLED shield example. And you have one file, .cpp. I'm gonna open the file, Control A, Control C, copy everything and paste this into SRC SRC, our SRC folder, OLED.ino. I'm just gonna overwrite everything. And pretty much this code is compilable, but we haven't connected the board. And the way to connect the board is written in the comment section of this example file. So here on the left side, you have the OLED and the photon on the right hand side. Uh, the most important thing to find out is if you take a look here at, at the display, you need to identify the ground pin. So the G and D is this the first pin. And if you cross reference this with the, uh, with the, with the instructions in the comment section, you can see that G and D is the first and all you have to do is find the first and follow from top to down to the rest. So this is the first G and D and now we have 3.3 .3, which is actually uh, following all the instructions on, on the, uh, in the comment. Just a tiny note, 3 
it's here says 3 V3, it's 3.3 voltage, and this is actually V VDD pin in the comment here. While working with the with the screen, please be a bit careful not to push it on the on the screen itself because you might break it. Use your nails and push using uh, just the board, the red board here to push in into pins. Another way to identify the ground, which is kind of a standard here, if you take a look at the shape of the pin, it, this one is square and the rest of these are round. So usually the square pin is the ground pin whenever you see it, but you should always double check. And now let's follow the instructions. The first pin is the one on top, goes to the ground. I will take the black, black wire for the ground. Also make sure that you disconnect the board so it's no, not running. And just follow the list. So the first one goes to the ground. I'm using the ground, the closest one. The second one is VDD. And this one goes to 3.3 which is on the other hand side. Please be extra careful not to hit VUSB because VUSB is five volts if you connect to, to the USB port. And reset, of course, don't, don't hit reset as well. Okay, I'm just gonna stretch it a bit. The next wire goes to A5. So I'm going to use this A5 and you have a choice. You have A5 here on the left hand side. However, you also have A5 here. It stands MOSI slash A5. You could use this one because the protocol of communication between this board and this screen is MISO MOSI SPI protocol. Uh, the next wire goes to A3. I'm going to use the yellow one. Also, you can use the A3 on the left side, but I will use the one for the protocol SPI header here on the right side. So this is exactly the one below the ground. The next wire is D2, but if you take a look at the instructions on the schematics here, it says that this pin D2 is not, not connected. So you skip one. So I'm skipping this one and go for the next, which is uh, D6 goes to D6 and choose pin D6. The next wire, I'm gonna use the blue one, is D7. You connect this one to D7. And the last wire is A2, which also has two places. I will choose the one on SPI header there. Now that the display is properly connected, you can plug in the board and flash the code. Of course. Um, but before we begin, just take a look here. Um, at the line 45, this is commented. Uncomment this line because this OLED object is being used and um, this was, I mean, you have a choice here. We are using uh, SPI protocol, but you can also use I, I2C as well. And if you are using I2C, you uh, need to use different constructor here, but we I'm using the default one for the SPI. And now, flash, cloud flash. I need to write device name. Of course, I mentioned before that you should probably cloud and then flash, but I'm usually skipping this. Now the board is being flashed and display should display a demo. Great. It is just a show off of the capabilities of the screen. And you can actually see a Pong game here. 
interestingly, the, this Pong game is fully functional and you can actually see the source code I will show you in a moment. And um, that's it, you can use display to type in values like strings, numbers and so on, but you can program pixel by pixel, which is kind of convenient if you have a graphs or anything else to do. So let's go through the code just to explain it a bit. In the setup, you have OLED begin. It is very common for any library that is used in, in, in embedded software development to have a begin method. And usually this method is called in, um, in the setup. And uh, this is some extra methods for uh, clearing, uh, clearing the display. And random seed is actually, uh, that, that this is convenient, this random is being used for, uh, for the Pong game and the random pixels. And in the main loop, this is very, very neat way to write the loops because you have here four method calls. Each method is just uh, one of the examples, pixels, line, shape, and text. And if you go to the pixel, you can actually see uh, all the pixels, how are pixels constructed in, um, on the board and lines, but I wanna show you uh, one convenient method how to uh, write things on the screen. This method print title is actually not from the library, rather one in the example. And this is how you write things on screen. First you clear the screen, then you set the font. The font is just a number because the library has several built-in fonts. You can check the source of the library, which I will show you. And now we choose the font. It's actually font size, not the type of the font. And now the next call is actually setting the cursor uh, in the middle of the screen in this particular case. And you call print, which literally prints the string to the display. And you need to call display method to actually project on, uh, on screen because all these printings and uh, changes to the um, OLED are actually pre-filling the buffer and once you're done, you call display and whatever is going to be displayed in this print title method, it will stay on it for second and a half and after that it's going to be cleared. And that's it. If you want to display something, I pretty much encourage you to, to use these code snippets here. And of course, if you need, if you need anything uh, more complex, you can always refer to the example. There is also, if we check, uh, check again, there is OLED cube. I'm gonna copy this example to show you how this looks. You can try it yourself, paste and cloud flash. So this demo, let me just check. Yeah, it's use, it is using SPI, which is by the way default. Check on the screen. And you have a spinning cube in kind of 3D, which looks pretty nice. Okay. This concludes this video. I hope you understand how to use a display in your, in your projects and see you next time.